Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how you can speed up your scene creation in Cartoon Animator 4.1 by using PSD templates. So we're going to talk about uh, basically the structure of the PSD file when you import it into Cartoon Animator and we're going to compare the two and uh, just going to show you a couple of naming conventions you can use to make your production a little bit faster. Okay, so right on the screen right, right now we have the uh, Photoshop file, the PSD file right here. You can see I have uh, under house um, there's a, a folder called house. Uh, first of all, note that everything here is under RL scene. Okay, so RL scene is the main folder here. And under RL scene, we have windmill, we have house, and we have these things like the foreground, for example. I'll just control Z when I move all this stuff here, just in case. And there's the turf. Okay, and the back tree back here. Um, the front tree. Uh, there's a hill. Okay, so these are just basic props that'll import in uh, and import as, as props in your scene, just single props. Okay, however, we do have two folders here. Okay, and we're going to talk about the folder structure in just a bit here. Um, but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to bring, go ahead and bring my PSD file into uh, Cartoon Animator so we can compare the two. Okay, so here's my PSD file. I'm simply going to click and drag it into Cartoon Animator and it's just going to import automatically. We'll take a quick look at the uh, scene manager here. Okay, so in the scene manager, you can see we have the same things. We have the back tree here, we have the front tree there, we have the windmill, we have the house. Okay, but now uh, the windmill and the house are actually made up of a couple of different things, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Now, back in Photoshop, when you import in something, or when you, when you have a folder called RL underscore scene, when you import a PSD file with this main folder in, it's automatically going to import in as a scene. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, let's take a look at the windmill and the house. Let's take a look at the house first, okay? So the house is actually made up of three different mini houses, I guess, okay? Three different house components. We have this one here, which is house one. Okay, you can just move it around like that. Uh, you can move it around separately. This one is house two, you can move it around separately. And this one is house three, which you can move around separately. Now, because they're all under the same folder called house, what's going to happen when you import it into Cartoon Animator is it's just going to go ahead and import it in as a, a single prop called house. Okay. Now, if you take this into composer mode, if you go up here on the top left and go into composer mode, you can see it's actually consists of three different parts here. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and uh, move them around. You can see just like that. Okay. And uh, you can adjust them this way. Uh, by going into composer mode and adjusting the position however you want, okay? Uh, but when you have a folder called house and the three different layers inside of it, this is the way it's going to import into Cartoon Animator. It's going to import in as a single prop with uh, three different uh, sub props here, uh, three different elements that you can move around separately in composer mode. Okay, so we're going to go back to stage mode here. And the next thing we're going to take a look at is the windmill. Now the windmill is a bit more complicated. So let's go ahead and back into Photoshop here and we're going to twirl up house. And let's go ahead and twirl down windmill. Now there's two uh, important folders in here and under windmill, you can see there's RL underscore pivot and RL underscore image. Now, whenever you have an RL underscore pivot folder, that's gonna be basically pivot points for your uh, for your prop, okay? You can see right here, there's a RL pivot. This one is tower uh, vein, okay? Now, the little arrow there indicates that basically the vein is attached to the tower, okay? So there's a tower right here, okay? And there's a tower and a vein. Now the main pivot point is this tower pivot point right here. And if we move that, you can see it's just a little pivot point by itself. It doesn't really affect anything. However, when we bring this into uh, Cartoon Animator 4, this pivot point here is gonna act as the pivot point for the entire tower. When we put this little uh, a greater than symbol here uh, after tower and into vein, you can see this is the pivot point, and this one, this pivot point will basically be influenced by this pivot point. Right? It'll have to follow along with all the pivots on this point here. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, into Cartoon Animator and show you what I mean here. So in Cartoon Animator, you can see we have windmill here, and if I rotate it, you can see it's rotating right here, just like this. There's a pivot point right in the middle. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is if we go into windmill and we uh, go into composer mode, let's take a look at the vein right here, okay? So the tower right here, and the pivot point is at the bottom there, just like this, okay? And the vein, that's the pivot point right here, the vein is just this little windmill part right here, okay? I'm just gonna control Z and undo that. So you can see the windmill, the vein will actually rotate around that pivot point, and the entire tower will rotate around this pivot point right here, okay, at the bottom, and that's the way we want it. Now, uh, let's go back into uh, Photoshop here, and let's go into this other one here, this other folder called RL underscore image. 
Now, when you put anything under the folder rl underscore image, it's going to basically act like a sprite library, okay? So in the sprite, in the RL image, we have a tower right here, okay, which is just the basic tower, this item right here, okay? And the vein is separate. So the vein is in a separate subfolder here, and you can see we have vein one and vein two, which is actually invisible at the moment. So there's actually two sprites in this vein, okay? So under RL image, uh, if you put vein under there, there's gonna be two, you can put as many layers as you want underneath that, and that'll kind of automatically go into a sprite library in Cartoon Animator. So let's go ahead and make this one invisible and make this one visible. Okay, you can see this is the vein right here and it will also rotate around the same pivot point because we defined that with our RL underscore pivot point right here, okay? Uh, this one right here under vein. So anything uh, under vein here will pivot around that point, okay? The tower is not under vein, the tower is under RL image so that we don't have to worry about that, okay? Uh, but anything under vein will pivot around that same pivot point. Anything under tower will pivot around that same tower pivot point. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look in uh, Cartoon Animator uh, into our sprite library. So in Cartoon Animator, uh, let's go back into stage mode first. We don't have to go into stage mode actually, we can just go to the sprite editor here. And you can see under sprite editor, if we select the vein, there we go, we have vein 1 and vein 2. Okay, so both the same images that we saw in Photoshop. And we can switch these out using sprite editing, okay? Uh, sprite edit animation. So let's go back into stage mode here and let's take a look at how we can uh, animate this uh, little windmill here. Um, let's go ahead and give it a quick uh, elastic motion here. Let's go to uh, entrance, the G3 elastic motions, maybe a scale one here. Uh, let's just go ahead and uh, use this open bottom one here. So it's gonna pop up from the bottom just like this. So we'll have the windmill pop up, group, just like that and then we'll have it animate. Now, the way we're gonna animate this is we're gonna have the uh, vein kind of just rotate around the pivot point. So we can just go ahead and uh, select this uh, tower right here. And if we go into the scene manager, you'll see that we have the windmill, but we need to go ahead and rotate the uh, vein there. So what we can do is we can go into the timeline here, uh, right here, uh, show timeline, and let's make sure we have object related track selected. So we can just uh, select the one thing here and we'll have the windmill. And I'm going to right click on the windmill and select prop key editor. Now you can also go over here to the uh, prop key editor over here. Okay. But I just like to right click on the item and here we'll, we'll be able to select the different items. Okay. The different uh, vein you can see here and the tower and notice when I select the individual ones, the timeline will change accordingly. Okay. So there's vein T there's vein S and there's vein D. The only one we're going to mess around with here is vein T, which means transform. Okay. S stands for sprite and D stands for deform. Uh, we're actually gonna uh, mess around with the S as well, the sprite, okay? Uh, but first of all, let's go ahead and start our animation. So our little thing will pop up here and probably about every 10 frames or so, we're gonna go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees. So I'm gonna select my vein first and rotate it like this. And you can see the um, rotate uh, uh, value right here. We can just go ahead and set that to 90 to make it an exact science there. Okay, and it'll create a keyframe in our transform track. Let's go ahead to 30 and do the same thing. So let's go to 30 and then we rotate it further 90 degrees. This one will be 180. Okay, whoops, we can go like, like this. Whoops, there we go. Okay, and then to frame 40, we'll go ahead and rotate it to zoop, to 70, to 70, there we go. And finally to frame 50, we're gonna rotate it back to the original value of It'll be 360 or one, okay? It doesn't really matter. We can just go ahead and uh, enter in zero there. Okay, so now we, what we've done is we've created an animation here. You can see the vein will rotate like this. Good stuff, okay? It'll pop up and begin rotating. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select all of the keyframes, okay? Just uh, we can go ahead and just press Control C and copy those and let's go to frame 60 and paste them, okay? So what's gonna happen is now we have this. The vein just kind of rotating continuing to rotate just like this, okay? Good stuff, uh, it's fine and dandy. Uh, what we can do is we can, you know, paste it over here as well, frame 100, just like that, and we'll have it just uh, continue on. Our vein will just rotate if we press the space key. Fair enough. Okay, uh, what I wanna do here is maybe midway through, I'm just gonna pull some magic and maybe frame 70 or so here. Uh, whoops, we kind of pasted that a little one frame earlier. That doesn't really matter. We'll just go to frame 69 in this case. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to use some sprite editing. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to the sprite editor here and select vein two. Okay, and now you can see 
and the vein S, uh, vein sprite track will have a keyframe right here. So at this point, it's going to switch from this uh, vein to this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and play that back. Good way through. It'll switch. And just because this one has more fins, I guess you can call them, it seems like it's going faster, but it's actually going at the same speed. Okay, pretty cool stuff. So that's really about all I wanted to show you guys in this tutorial. Just basically wanted to explore the structure in Photoshop, the folder structure, how you can modify that, uh, how you can use these folders, RL image, uh, the uh, um, RL pivot, okay, uh, under a single prop called windmill, all right? So when you do that, it's gonna create pivot points at those specific points there, and RL image, uh, if you wanna uh, switch your sprites or add to your sprite library automatically, you can create this folder structure right here under RL image. All right, so thanks so much for watching, everyone. Hopefully you learned a lot. Uh, make sure you check out our other Cartoon Animator 4.1 tutorials for the new features in 4.1. And I hope to see you in the next video.